July 17th, 2020. I'm Russell, and this is Rocky Road Devotions, a few minutes of help for today's journey. Our devotion today is entitled, Hard Worship, and our scripture is Psalm 86. The psalmist writes, Teach me your ways, O Lord, that I may live according to your truth. Grant me purity of heart, so that I may honor you. With all my heart I will praise you, O Lord my God. I will give glory to your name forever, for your love for me is very great. You have rescued me from the depths of death. With the exception of miracles, the physical laws God set in place as he created the universe are indisputable. That is, the rules of how stuff acts cannot be altered. One of those laws was articulated by Sir Isaac Newton this way. For every action, there is an opposite, an equal reaction. According to the psalmist, the idea of heart worship is similar to that. True worship is the extreme response of the heart, mind, and soul to love God and live in such a manner as to please Him. The one fly in the ointment in saying that our worship of God is an equal and opposite reaction is the equal part. There's no worship any human can offer that's equal to how God loves us. God is without peer. In the same way that a watch is not equal to the watchmaker, nor a house greater than its builder, no created being is greater or even somewhat equal to the Creator. God is God, and we are not. And so, what worship pleases God? How is it that we give to God worship that's acceptable? In the New Testament, Jesus affirmed to the Pharisees the answer to that question found in the words of Deuteronomy 6.5. Jesus said to them, You must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Now, with Scripture, there are no words which are insignificant or without the full force of what God meant. Both Old and New Testaments affirm that when it comes to the worship that comes out of our heart, soul, and mind, and anything else we might have available, the key word is all. Proper worship of God means that you offer it with everything you've got. Strength, words, resources, even the breath in your lungs at this moment. And if God gives you another, what's the cost for worship? Well, what have you got? Hold on, preacher, you just want me to write a bigger check for the offering. Well, if you can, then you've got a decision, don't you? If a smaller check means you've worshipped with all your heart and mind and soul and strength, well, then no. Hold on, preacher, you just want me to give up my vacation to go on some mission trip to help build a school for some third world kids. Well... If that week at the gaming tables in Las Vegas occupies a bigger place in your mind and heart and soul as opposed to the kids that would attend that school, well then, no. Have a nice trip. See, it isn't something a preacher, your wife or husband or some wise man on top of a mountain can answer for you. It's all about your heart, your mind, your soul, and the strength God has put in your hands. Because worship isn't about what the preacher says in his sermon, or the music coming from the piano and the choir. It isn't even about perfect attendance ribbons or positions held, or whether your giving is 5% or 75%, or you take something out of the plate when it's passed. Worship is all about your heart, and whether God has full access to every last bit of what you consider yours, Finances, strength, time, relationships, habits, willingness to go where he sends, do what he wants, and readiness to drop everything else when he calls. That is heart worship, and it's pleasing to God. Let's pray together. Father, so often we refer to my time, or my car, or my family, or my bank account. Or so much of what we deem our possessions and entitlements. We are so much like children who own stuff their parents have provided, and yet we think we've earned and we are therefore entitled. Teach us to know how that turns worship away from heaven and towards us. Teach us how that means we're making ourselves God, and how it makes our lives barren of worship and unoccupied by your presence. Lord, in your mercy. For you today, 
Sir Isaac Newton was an inventor as well as a mathematician. One of his valuable discoveries was the reflecting telescope, a system of mirrors that reflects light to project an image. Let's let today's thoughts be trained on our hearts like that telescope to see what kind of worship is really going on in there. You chew on that as you hit the rocky road today. Have a blessed day.